Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. <clears throat> Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things? and became worthless themselves? They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us out from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled. O oh, heavens, at this, be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord. 
For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts, to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my way. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat, and satisfy him with honey from the rock. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love, love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you are giving a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, James. Really good to see all of your, your faces. And I'm sorry you can't see all of mine, but I'm going to wear a mask today. Um, so... I want to talk a little bit about Jeremiah, this reading from Jeremiah this morning and the insight Jeremiah makes about the life of faith. What is the life of faith? What is faith? What does it mean to follow this God? who brought us out of Egypt, who made himself incarnate in the word of God, Jesus of Nazareth. What is faith? And Jeremiah says something very interesting about what faith actually looks like. And it means, he suggests, asking the question where is the lord where is god now this seems a little counterintuitive or surprising because we would think that the life of faith is knowing where god is and finding god encountering God. But no, that's not what Jeremiah says. The people of Israel were not asking the question, where is God? So Jeremiah suggests to us that maybe the life of faith, our lives as Christians, are more about feeling a bit lost and feeling a bit like we've lost God and we cannot find him because we're asking the question constantly, where is God? This is the life of searching, searching for God. Now, many of us may have had experiences in our lives where we feel like 
We've encountered God. We've met God. We've found God. Here is the Lord. I've found him. I've experienced him. But that's a pretty small sliver of our life, isn't it? Most of the time, we may feel like we don't know where God is and we're searching. We're searching here when we come to worship. We're seeking God, looking for him. We're searching in our relationships with our loved ones. Where is God in this relationship? Perhaps we go out and we search in nature. Where is God in the world, in the beauty of the world? Where is the Lord? St. Augustine made the insight about faith that it's more to do with desire and searching than it is about reaching the destination. Because while we're alive, while we're living, there's something that will always keep us from encountering God fully. Our lives are a search for God along a path, along a way that is sometimes murky, difficult to see. And this is the life of faith. We're constantly desiring God because we've never actually reached God fully. And that's okay. Jesus says in John's gospel that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The way to Jesus, the way to God, is through Jesus. Jesus helps us as we stumble along the way, groping, trying to find where is God? Where is God in my life? Because there are so many distracting things and so many illusions. That's what Jeremiah refers to as other gods, other false gods that don't actually provide us with living water. They may seem like they do. The water's there, but it starts to seep out through the cracks. The cracks in the cisterns, the water seeps out. It's an illusion of living water. And that's simply our condition, our nature as humans is to look for gods. We have many gods in our life. And yet there is one God calling out to us begging us to ask that question of where he is. Martin Luther noticed about the crucifixion, this moment when Jesus is calling out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Luther was fascinated by this moment and thought it was so powerful because it expresses Jesus' own feeling of looking for God. Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, in this moment of pain and suffering in his death, that moment when he is most clearly revealed to us as God, he asks, where is God? So if he can do it, and surely we can, and in fact, maybe we should. So my message this morning is that it's okay, in fact, more than okay, to be confused about where God is in your life or in general. 
And perhaps that's something that we are invited by Christ to lean into. That searching, that seeking, that questioning, that feeling that God is not present and I want God. Our life of faith is one of desire, one of searching, one of asking, one of seeking, one of knocking. Knocking on the door to ask, where are you, God? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand and join me as we recite the words of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. <clears throat> For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek for Michael, our presiding bishop, our bishop-elect Paula, and our assisting bishop Chilton. For all who serve God in God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for those in need of healing. Bob and Lisa, Karen, Martha, Lorraine, Judy, Beatrice, Ramon, 
Silvio, Jonathan, Ramona, Christine, Kathy, Deacon Carol, Father Bob, Patty, Dorothy, Robert, David, and Doris. Are there others? Thank you. For those who seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Jay and Georgia, Alex and Eric, Liam, Kate, Phil, Andrea, CJ, Suzanne, Derek, and Matthew. Are there others? Hear us, Lord. For oh, your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, for those celebrating birthdays, Aaron Keebles, Doug Ferguson, and Dodie Trask. For the anniversary of the wedding of Michael and Jane Messa Erickson. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death. We, we proclaim his, his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Barnabas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say,
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you everlasting. Amen.
his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank 
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.